I'll see you in a few again. Bye. <laughs> Been so much fun. Ta -ta. Bye bye. Go to work. No, I don't want to do it. You have to. No, I don't want to go to work. Psst, I'm not crazy. You're crazy. Morning, Greg over at DIY Army Home and Campers Life. Today, we're starting. Ooh, let me get back out of the shade. Today, we are starting on some of our projects for our new to us fifth wheel. Number one, first project is really so we can move the trailer or the fifth wheel, excuse me, fifth wheel now. And that requires installation of a fifth wheel hitch. Now, we've got the hitch right over here. It is a Reese Easy Roller. So we'll be able to use it in our short bed pickup truck. Uh, luckily, uh, when we bought the trailer, they had it. And so they added that to the sale of the trailer. So thank you much. And for the rails, we went with the BW, and it's the RVR 3210 kit, universal. And we went with the RVR 2600 quick fit custom installation bracket for 2003 to 2012 Dodge 2500 to 3500. So if you think about doing this, installing your own, and you don't want to do any drilling, welding, or anything like that, check BW out. See if they got the custom fit uh, system just for your trailer. Now, of course, yes, you're gonna have to drill holes into the bed, of course. Uh, I don't know what the other makes and models are, but I do know that mine should be no drilling of the frame at all. At least that's what I saw in the paperwork. So I'm gonna bring you along as much as I can with this. It might get kind of awkward at times because I am working underneath and on top and I'm using, where'd they go? Some big drills, bits that is. See, there's a big one. That almost looks like a baby one, but it's not, it's still a big one. So, without further ado, I'm gonna jump in, start getting some stuff along. I'll bring you along as I can. All right, I've got everything out of the boxes. And as you can see, envelope that came with the instructions, or the instructions were inside the envelope. Please read if you're gonna try this. This I am a firm believer on reading before you install. Don't do that man thing where we throw them away. I've been accused and I've been guilty of that before, but no, follow your instructions, please. Check out those rails. Holy criminy, those things are thick and heavy, along with the brackets. Looks like they'd be powder coated. Let's get that out of the way. We got a bag full of bolts, nuts, parts, shims, spacers. And oh, there's the shim package. Got some U bolts, and I'm gonna assume to say that is some special dandy tool to help keep certain things in place while you get bolts in. So, there's the beginning ever. Let's get it done. Now, for the first thing I gotta do is I gotta get the first rail, the back rail, positioned in the bed where it's supposed to go. Now, we have the short bed, so from the edge right here of the bed to the front or the excuse me let's call it the back edge because it's to the back of the truck the back edge of the bracket needs to be 26 and 3 8 okay so 26 and 3 8 is what we need and then we also need to center it side to side so let me get up there we'll get to uh, this uh, starting to get position now my installation on my short bed I have to be again 26 3 8 from the edge of the bed to the rear edge of the bar. So we're gonna put our tape on the edge, come over 26 and 3 8 and we're gonna come over here and check because you always want to check both sides. 26 3 8 oh maybe a 30 second off. Let's do this. We'll go just like that. Come back in, we're gonna measure. 26, 3 eighths. Now, side to side. I've got four inches. And I've got four inches. Don't use four inches as a reference. Do your own, make sure it's there. There is my front, or excuse me, my rear bracket. 
Now, we're gonna go and we're gonna mark all locations. And for the rear mounting rail, we're gonna come in or go to this one right here. So the fourth one in on both sides. We're gonna dig the center one right here. And then we're gonna do again, fourth one in both sides there. The way I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna come in and grab my drill. I'm gonna take a half inch bit and just give a little bit of a twist on her. I've got the rhino bed, so it's gonna take a little nick in it. I'll put an eighth inch bit through, or excuse me, ah, just a touch bigger. Um, and uh, then I know the next step is I gotta go underneath, put brackets in place, make sure that they're proper before I continue drilling. So that's why you don't wanna just go with a big one first, so. Now I've got the five holes drilled. Of course, I'm gonna have to repo remove this heat shield temporarily so I can get to this screw here uh, to bolt it down. I've got one right there. You should be able to see that one, but I'm also gonna have to uh, get up here and remove the rubber for the muffler and be able to get up there. I might have to remove this heat shield so I can get the drill up there drill the hole up there but as you know it's a cross member one of those uh, holes that I drilled is hidden in that cross member we have to be able to see it to make sure it's gonna work properly and since the bit that I have is not long enough I gotta go get another bit longer so I can bolt all the way through it also as a footnote this uh, wiring bracket right here or wiring harness needs to come off just for temporarily while I put the bracket in place. So I'm not pinching it. You wanna make sure you don't pinch any gas lines, uh, brake lines, wiring. And over on this side, we are clear of that. Just the muffler that we, muffler brackets that we gotta work on back there. So I am off to the Tyson wash. Uh, there's a drill place out there. Uh oh, I gotta go put gas in the generator also. I'm gonna get that done. I'll be back and we'll get going on this up here. See you in a few. Well, I'm back. Uh, took a little longer than I expected. Uh, I stopped and said hi to uh, one of our uh, Campus Life's Facebook group admin who's uh, out at Tyson, uh, excuse me, out of the Postal South for a few days. Um, and we talked for a few and then took off headed in and it was perfect perfect because the place that I went to at Tyson Wells was just rolling up the tarps opening up shop and I was able to get some yes my wife's gonna be very very happy I got some safety squints look at this look at this boom boom no debris in the eye when I'm drilling underneath yes these are not appropriate even though I can see better with them so I might drill my finger because I'm wearing safety squints over my readers but you know at least i won't get anything in my eye just kidding i can see enough to at least drill my thumb and i also got me some long lobotomy drill bits well okay but did i say Ooh, i might have said a bad word uh anyways i got some longer drill bits get through there uh locate so let's get her done now the instructions say to locate your driver's side bracket and we're going to stick it up there we're going to take one of the u-bolts that comes with the kit we're going to get it in place and we're going to make sure that these holes are centered in the bracket right here and these holes right here if they are then we're golden if they are not then we actually have to re-drill those holes until they're centered in those holes got it okay now again unfortunately this is one of those projects where you really can't video it that great so needless to say I will come back when I get it up there 
Now that was a bit of a chore, but we got the bracket up there. We can have a hole right here that we're gonna use. We can see our hole there and our hole there look good. So next, we got to drill nine sixteenths on the top of the bed uh, for those two holes. Be that one also. Um, and then we need to check this side, but then this underneath here gets the seven eighths hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this one fits properly. When it does, or if it does, then we can proceed with the next step of drilling bigger holes. Coming back at you. All right, putting this one up in place. Holes look good also. So we can go ahead and set the nine, excuse, yeah, nine sixteenths up on top, drill through, and then we drill the bottom with the bigger one. And we're that much closer. Then we got another one to do up front. But let's get this first one done. See you on top. Yeah, you can see daylight through them bed there. So next thing i can do is grab this big old oh, there it is real bit and i guess you try to come up here and drill that one and then i'll move that bracket and drill right right drill right there not there but right there and uh once i get those done come back now i can't go all the way through i just got to go through this one right here the bottom of the cross member. Uh, maybe if I point you in the right direction, you'd see what I'm talking about. That hole right there. So, again, I'll come back when I uh, got her done. <laughs> Gonna have some fun, fun, fun. So, see you in a few. Now, I'm not telling you what to do, but my drill bit would not fit up between the two posts here for your muffler bracket. Sorry about the jittery. One-handed. So, what I did is I actually took and put a wrench on it and some mechanics may know what I'm doing. And then I added a little bit of cheater just to pry it out just a little bit. Just to move it, just to nerk. Open it up just enough. Then I can take and actually tap it back in place once I'm done drilling. But that way I can drill through it. Now that we've got our holes drilled underneath and on top, we take and reposition our rail back over the holes. We're gonna take two of the four and a half inch bolts. Oop. Takes two hands. <laughs> And we're gonna put those through the back, excuse me, the front of the rail, all the way through. Next, we're gonna take three of the two inch and we're gonna install those. Now, we've got spacers here so that we do not damage our bed when we tighten these down in place as we see this is actually right on there so we don't need one there we don't need one there because it's going through there and there's a space special space for that so it looks like the only one I need right now is right there so let's uh, grab the instructions grab some more of the shims hardware Go underneath with instructions see what we got to do to get this mounted it's getting there almost got one done we've got the bolts set in through the bed next one is we've got this bolt right here that we got to fish to this location right here 
And the way to do that is with this fish, which is the wire that was uh, all rolled up earlier. It's got threads on the end. Let me swing around. There's another one here. So you can see what it looks like. If I can find, there you go. That's what it looks like, it's a long one. So we're gonna fish that through the frame rail so that we could bolt the, so we're gonna fish it through the frame rail so we can bolt that bracket in place. So that's magically right there. You don't see it yet, but it's there. So I got a fish, be back. Now it's a good thing I didn't go fishing right away and I checked uh, my rigging that I needed. This right here is also going to have to go on this wire and get fished through at the same time because that's actually what's going to hold that, that from spinning. So I'm going to string it up pursuant to uh, the instructions or destructions right there. Thank goodness I'm reading them, huh? Now, we have got our spacer inside the channel. We just held it up there and then put the bracket through it. We just got the nut set on it. We've got our bolt through the bottom of the bracket. Now, we are gonna go ahead and put our U-bolt on through the holes. We're gonna put all the hardware on that is required washer, lock nut, nut, and we're gonna hand tighten it, and then we'll continue. After that, we will take our offset spacers and put them in place. Now we're gonna put it like, I'll show you right here. It'll go right here so that it doesn't mess the uh, corrugation in the beds up when we tighten everything up. That's what these are for. And the washers, the U-shaped ones that we put underneath the bed on the front, or excuse me, on top, are doing the same thing so it doesn't crush it. So, well, we've got 99% of the bolts just kind of snugged up on the back here. Uh, this one right here is still loose. I'm gonna have to come in with a U-joint uh, to get that one. But just everything's just kind of snug. Uh, now it is time to start with the front. So let's uh, get up top and get going on that. We are up top. As you can see, the fifth wheel base is in place, the hitch. It's the slider version, of course. And I set the front rail. How I did that is I went ahead and just put the fifth wheel on uh, the tabs on the rear in place. Then I set the forward one in place. Uh, set the tabs in there. Next, I took my trusty micrometer, okay, measuring device, and I measured, made sure that the distance between here on both sides was even. If I could show you, I could show you, it's 16 and a quarter is what it hits. That is, that is, that is. And then, of course, mine was four inches on both sides. So boom, boom. Then I did an almighty kind of kick forward, came back around, kick backwards, make sure it kind of settled in place. Now, I believe pursuant to the destructions, I start making drilly holes again. So I gotta go read some more, but I think that's where I'm at. Okay, and just remember these have not been tightened down yet, fully. Come back when I got some more holes in my bed. Now reviewing my instructions, it shows that the front rail has different uh, drill locations. So you wanna make sure that you uh, Double check your paperwork, your destructions, instructions. Now, I've already taken my half inch and got my center. Now I can go and do my eighth inch pilot and uh, go underneath, make sure that I'm not drilling gas tanks, brake lines, anything like that. So 
I'll get that done, and we'll come back. Now I've confirmed that the holes are gonna be fine where they are. So now it's time to drill some holes, get back underneath, get this thing bolted up, get this job done so I can move that over to here. Let me start twisting some metal out again. We've got all the bolts installed. Spacers in place. Ah, come underneath here. We've got brackets in place. U-bolts, lock washers, washers, nuts, everything is on in place. Now it is time to go and torque everything to 80 foot-pound. Of course, you notice that stuff is not going to be able to be torqued with a regular torque wrench because of location. I will be using a crow's foot on some. I will be using a wrench on some and I will be using a regular torque wrench on some. I will get a feel for what 80 pounds is on the different tools and that is how I will get all this stuff tight. Or if that doesn't work, I'll just go as tight as I can and give it a little bit more. But let me get all this stuff tightened down. Then I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna make sure that this is secured so it doesn't bounce around, it doesn't rub. I'm gonna put my muffler bracket back in, my heat shields, get my tire, Well, there she is. She is installed. Whew. That was a fun project. Don't even want to know what time it is right now. Yeah, tested it. Everything feels, looks to be working good. Uh, so we got this to release the pin. This one right here, we will set and allow the whole system rack back uh, for uh, positioning. It brings the whole trailer back off the axles. So, I'm gonna leave you with a party picture of a sweaty Greg. Uh, again, I don't know what time it is. Don't wanna know. Uh, just know that it's gonna be time to move the trailer, get the trailer parked, and time for some adult beverages. I think I deserve it today. So, listen, this is a project if you are capable and you have the tools. If you have any uh, doubts that you can't do it, don't do it, take it to somebody. If you don't have the right tools, don't do it, take it to somebody. This is just to show you how I did it. It's not a DIY. So, until the next time, Happy camping.